Today's project is a logo that we're going to create from Canva from scratch and it's going to end up looking like this and we're going to convert it to a 3D logo. The question came up on our community to say that when can I trademark a logo as my own? So Canva has an answer and you can go to Canva forward slash help forward slash trademark dot logo. I'm going to link this link on the description below so you know exactly what you need to do if you're using Canva to design your logos. So if you want the logo to be your own, Canva says there's two ways that you can do that. You can design an original from scratch or upload your original that you've designed maybe from Adobe, Illustrator or other software to Canva and then you can edit it while it is on Canva. But we on this channel focus a lot on designing logos from scratch because that gives us the ability to trade market and keep it as our own because Canva says if you create it as your own from scratch using basic lines, shapes and fonts that Canva gives to you, then the logo is yours. You can trademark it and when you're selling it to a customer, at least you know that the logo is created from scratch by yourself. So join me on Canva. Let's jump in and create this logo all from scratch by ourselves. To start your design journey, you're going to do this in four steps. The first step is you're going to create a logo canvas and then you're going to press L for line in order for you to create a line. You're going to make the line size very thin, like a two, and then you're going to zoom in and then you start creating. We're going to duplicate this. What you're trying to create here is a box like that. We're gonna duplicate this. Like this, it didn't exist. You made it like this. So you can go pick the bad of the good. Got a glass halfway. I know it's easier to hide and just to lay low. Zooming in to make sure that it is aligned and it's a nice square box that is perfectly like that. Next, you're going to go to your elements. You're going to go to see all and we, we've scrolled down to the shape that's going to allow us to squeeze it to a smallest circle. I found that if I'm using the round circle, it doesn't squeeze all the way into the smallest circle. If I use this shape, then I can squeeze it all the way so that it's the smallest size. So I'm going to change it to white everything. And then I'm going to reduce the size to the smallest dot. So if you squeeze in like that, you can see that it allows you to go all the way in and make it the smallest, smallest little dot like that. I can even, uh, when I zoom in, I can even go in more and zoom in to have it like a small, smallest little dot like that. Then I'm going to fast forward because I'm going to group my box and then I'm going to take my little dot and align it all the way in here so that it fills the square with little dots as my decoration. The other thing that you could do so that the box doesn't disturb you, you can lock it so that you're happily working without being disturbed. You're going to go duplicate and you're going to align it. And then you carry on like that, lining them up all the way in. And you'll see Canva will, the, the AI will see what you're trying to do. And it's going to allow you to just duplicate, duplicate. Awesome. So the line is not straight. What I'm going to do. I'm going to group them together and then align them to a line that I want. So group them, then I'm going to put them in a line that I want. All you do now is you duplicate this and then you rotate it in all four squares. 
so that it is nice and easy, nicely done. And there's your square with the dots created. So I'm gonna unlock the background and then I'm gonna group everything and then lock it. But before I lock it, I want to just size it and make it a nice aligned square to my canvas. I've grouped it, I'm gonna lock it, and I'm gonna jump into step number two, where I'm creating my beautiful cup with my cocktail. And then I'm adding my olives on my cup. So I'm gonna go and go back to my elements, and I'm gonna go to lines and shapes again, and I'm looking for my shape and i'm going to be using the triangle down and you press on it once and you add it to your design then i'm going to align my cup over the square shape like that i want it to be yellow and i'm going to duplicate the shape so that i complete it with my cocktail nice and easy right and then i'm going to press the circle and i'm going to add my first olive we make that green, I'm going to duplicate the shape and I'm going to press L for line and change the color of that line so that it is a sticky for my olive. I'm just going to bring the line back, one back, so that it is nicely sticking on the olives like that. Then I'm going to include yet another line so that I can create the rest of my cup. I stick it over there, I align it nice and easy, and I'll change the color, make that yellow too. Let's see, maybe we can make it a little bit, just slightly bigger. We just include the line weight, and then it is slightly bigger. Then I'm gonna go back to my shapes and I'm looking for this shape. That's called pearl, my pearl. I like the pearl. We do so much with the pearl, right? And I'm changing that to yellow and I'm squeezing that to create the last section of my glass of cocktail. So you, you align it nicely and your glass of cocktail is nicely done. That's step number two, it's done. You're welcome to put in little red dots on your olives if you want to to have that creative flair. The last step, you press T for text and the font that you're looking for is Moon Time. Then you select Moon Time, then you write the name of the club that you're creating for. In spirit of my old employer that I still love a lot, even today, we used to have Chillas on Thursdays. In the spirit, we call this club Chillas Club. And then it picks up the nice font of moon time. Then next we want to add effects. So all of these extra effects and techniques that I'm showing you, you could create them and add them on any logo. It doesn't have to be a club logo that you could be using this gorgeous effect and being creative with your logos. For this one, you're gonna highlight your text, then you're gonna select effects. Then you're gonna go to neon and you select neon and then you scroll down and you change the color of your text and you make that yellow as well so that it lights up like that. And when you are on your effects, on your neon, if you want it to glow up like that, then you're going to increase the intensity so that it is like intense and then it glows like that. What I really liked, it made the box behind also glow like that. So it was quite cool. That's not the only effect that you could use as well while you're there. You could scroll down and then maybe curve it if you want to curve it. Either way, I was happy with how it looked. And this is your last step when you're designing on Canva and your 2D logo is done and you're excited and it looks amazing and you can click on the share button and you're going to download it as a transparent background. So if I want to download the one that we've created together, which is page number two, and you click on done, 
and then you click on download. If you don't have transparent background, then you can use erase.bg or remove.bg. You're more than welcome also to try Canva Pro for free for 30 days and tell me how that is going for you. Next, which is the last step, you're gonna jump to photo P and you're going to convert it to 3D. Once we go to www.photop.com, we're gonna click on PSD templates. And you scroll down and you pick the template that you want. I love this template, the logo mockup on Office. You just double click on it and then you click on the link, it opens up and your logo opens up. You're more than welcome to change the background where you, when you don't want to see the office picture because we're doing chillers, you can take off the background and put in a club, but you can go watch this video that I've created recently that you see on the screen. What you're then going to do when you get here, you're gonna go to where it says your logo here and you double click on there, and then you're gonna hide the group that gives you guidance and then you click and you drag the 2D logo that we've just created, you size it. This is one of those 3D mockups that are tiny and small. So you make it big if it's a small mockup. And then you click on correct, then you press Command S or Control S on Windows to change it to Smart Object. Then you're gonna click where it says Logo Mockup on Office and then it creates that amazing, gorgeous looking logo that we have created together. You then export this by going file, export as PNG or whichever format that you want to export as. When you click on export and you see the width and the height, you are more than welcome to make the width bigger or make it smaller. Just take note, if you make it bigger, it starts pixelating. What I usually do, I download it small, then I go back to Canva, then I add it on Canva as when I'm downloaded as an SVG, then I can, it's a vector file, then I can squeeze it and make it big size without it pixelating. We click on save and that takes care of this logo. If you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to subscribe. The next video that you could watch is when we were creating a pet logo. Thank you so much for joining me today. I do enjoy you um, spending time with me. And yes, don't forget to share so that my channel also grows and YouTube can share it with lots more designers. We could be helping learn basic design. I will see you on the next video.